Hello, and welcome to Connect and Collaborate. I'm Alex Hopkins, taking over for Tammy Schaefer, your regular on-air producer. And uh, all this week on Connect and Collaborate, we've been focusing on secondary education. And this week is sponsored by Talent Found. Talent Found connects students, job seekers, workers, and businesses with the programs, tools, and resources to, to design their own unique paths to career and business success. Talent Found is championed by the Colorado Workforce Development Council and powered by Talent Found Charter Affiliates. Talent Found. Discover, ability, work, develop talent, and find success. Learn more at talentfound.com. Or, excuse me, talentfound.org. And uh, today I have with me Kristen Muzzy. She is leading the manufacturing vertical for the Colorado Business Roundtable. She's a champion and advocate for manufacturing in Colorado and nationally. Hi, Kristen. Welcome. Hey, Alex. It's great to be here. And it's, we've got a great show today. Yeah. Um, and as always, uh, we've got wonderful guests and we have to be flexible and, and work on the fly. <laughs> yes, so, <we> do. <laughs> so today, um, super excited uh, to have John have Jonathan Berg the CEO of James Irwin Charter Schools and uh, welcome Jonathan to the show well thank you I'm happy to be here we're we're delighted to have you and just full disclosure to our, our audience today yes. Jonathan uh, was Johnny on the spot for us and he yes. stepped up to to do um, the show today because we we're going to have Rob Doherty who's the principal of one of James Irwin charter schools called P Tech which mm -hmm. is a trade school um, and in it's located in Colorado Springs um, it's grades 6 through 12 plus two years after and uh, and and um, Rob got got ill and oh, so no. Jonathan then stepped up so uh, uh, gosh Jonathan we're super excited to have you um, I wonder if so we're gonna focus we want to learn more about James Irwin charter schools yes the the suite of charter schools as well but really want to focus in on on P tech and you know yeah. that the history of of how P tech came about what P tech is because I know a little bit about, uh, about it now after having uh, talk to Rob and to Linda and to yourself, and I am so excited about what you guys are doing in in the springs for for the kids. So I wonder if we could start out, Jonathan, if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, James Irwin Charter Schools. Um, certainly, uh, James Irwin Charter Schools uh, started with a college prep high school. Uh, in 2000, okay, and uh, it was really started by a group of parents who uh, wanted a, a, a certain kind of education, a good education for their children, and uh, as we moved along, we found out there are a lot of other parents out there that wanted good education for their children also, and a, and a different kind of education that uh, was available at that time. So... Um, we started the high school, and a couple of years later, we started middle school. And then uh, two years after that, we started uh, an elementary school. So we started with a high school and grew down, which is not really the textbook way to do it. But uh, it, it worked, you know, yeah. at, at the end. And one of the things that uh, I had been observing uh, for a number of years is we, we were a college prep high school, and we had... Uh, students coming who uh, were there because we have an emphasis on character, uh, we uh, have an emphasis on a positive environment, uh, we have an emphasis on safety, so they were there, uh, but they really didn't want to go to college. Okay. They, nothing wrong with that, you know, they just, that was not, uh, that did not fit their their set of interests and um, and that always bothered me a little bit because uh, as a result of that because they weren't terribly interested they did enough to get by but they really didn't engage in the way mm. we would have liked them to engage right uh, and then uh, in the, it was a 2010 or 2000 early 2011 uh -huh. uh, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal talking about the fact that there were uh, 600,000 skilled mm. manufacturing jobs 
unfilled yes. because manufacturers couldn't find anybody to fill them. And that, that number has done nothing but stuff. grow. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, I had been talking to Rob, who at the time was our dean of students in the high school, uh -huh. uh, about that uh, earlier. And so I saw this article, and I took it to his office, and I said, Rob, we have got to do something about this. Uh, there, there, there's a market out there for uh, the kind of, of school that would build build skilled tradesmen. Mm -hmm. And so um, Rob, who was very, was very skilled, he had a manufacturing operation for a while, and then uh, he's a contractor. and um, He's done a vari a variety of things, oh, entrepreneur yeah, he, and he innovator. Is, and, he is remarkable. Yes, <laughs> he is. He is. Remarkable. And uh, <clears throat> so he... Um, so we started sketching out kind of what that would look like, uh, and we really wanted to focus on the skilled trades. Okay. Uh, we felt that it, it would uh, give students a, a valuable set of skills. Uh, it would give them entree into uh, really car good career options. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we started working on that. It took us six years <laughs> wow. to go to get the approval, to find someone who would uh, agree with us and, and uh, uh, let us uh, open the school, authorize us to open the school in their district. Uh, and so Falcon District 49 in Colorado Springs said, why don't you do that? Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, what, what, was the we, what was the tipping point for them? to finally say yes i mean after after six years what what was it well we we had tried uh, two or three other districts that uh that were not really warm to the idea mm -hmm. uh they viewed it more as a um as 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 a credit recovery program uh and we tried to make it clear, no, this is not a credit recovery program. Mm -hmm. This is a professional school. Okay. This, this is for kids that want to work with their hands. This is their interest set. Yeah, this they, isn't they, the last chance school. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. And so um, because they're entering into really very sophisticated professions. And uh, and so that's what we wanted to build. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know we're we're moving down the road on that right now. So uh, the vision is there, and uh, every month we're making progress. Now, the one of the big things that's important to uh, the employers in this town, and I'm sure. <laughs> everywhere, yes. is the issue of character and work ethic. Oh, yes. And so those are two things that, that we really focus on. Uh, and, and it's nice for discipline issues because it's not that they're terrible people. It's that they've had a failure in character. So let's figure out how can we uh, move and display better character, become if you will, our better selves, mm -hmm. as we relate to people around us, as we work, uh, how can we display uh, the kind of, of character and, uh, and uh, just lost words here. <laughs> be, be a good contributor to, to yeah. society, to the organizations, to our, you know, to our family. Right to the organizations yeah, be, be, that we're contributing to? Be a great employee. Yes. Yeah. You know, that, that takes initiative, uh, ask great questions. Mm -hmm. those, uh, so, those, soft skills, those soft skills, I, I consider them, well, I consider them core skills, but they it, it used to be kind of taught in, in schools, but, then, but so much of that has been taken away. <laughs> and... Um, uh, and and you know, family life has has changed in in our country, and so many of these skills are kids are coming to school and they just they don't have them. And I hear from you know 
public school teachers a lot. I have a number in my family, and and it's it's a real struggle. It is a real struggle. These you know, for these kids. Well, it's it's one it's one of those things. We've gotten to a place now where you can look anything up on Google, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need to go over the state capitals anymore in school. It's not something you need to memorize. That's something that you can look up on your own. It's always going to be at your fingertips at this point. And so I, I feel like kids are, are almost bored. Mm. I hate to say that. So that's why this is such an interesting avenue, mm -hmm. right? And I, it's, it's one of those things that I think is unique, and we should definitely have more of them Absol across the country. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, uh, Jonathan, so it, it took you guys six years to get approval. District 49, um, they finally said yes. <laughs> what did... Well, what? Let, let me be a little clearer on that. Okay. They heard that we were trying to get this done, so they invited us. Oh. We had not gone to District 49 oh. at that point. Oh, okay. So they invited us to come and talk about how would this work. Gotcha. And so uh, they, they were very proactive, uh -huh. um, and uh, they're great people to work with. Oh, fantastic. So, um, they, they kind of... Um, came out of the woodwork, if you will, to say, hey, that's something that we would like to see, and uh, it would work well in our district, and so uh, that's how we ended up there. Now, where where exactly is District 49 in, in the Springs? Uh, it's it's on the eastern uh, side of Colorado Springs. Okay. There's uh, Powers Boulevard, which is uh, a state highway, but I don't remember the number, uh -huh. uh, 21. and so it's east of that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> My sister lives out that way. So I was going to say, how did you know that, know? Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me any other road in Colorado. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> that was fortuitous. So, uh, so yes, uh, it's it's east of Powers and uh, on and in the north and and north. Okay. So um, it's uh, it's it's a great place. Uh, a lot of rural, uh, further east. And, gotcha. Uh, yeah, so I, th I think it's, um, it, it's, but it's still, as as the city is moving east, mm -hmm. it's becoming a little more central. Yeah. Okay. So, so when, uh, um, so you collaborated with District, the District 49 invited you guys in, you collaborated, you, you gave your vision, and you guys found a match. Now, as I understand it, it's it's pretty difficult to get a charter school started, let alone a charter school uh, with a trade school like what you're doing, because you're talking about <laughs> some pretty significant capital investments that have to be made. And there's a whole different, it's a whole different curriculum. So share with us that whole journey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and, and I know that we don't have all day, but it's <laughs> no. well. It it is it is really um, um, it's more it's a lot more than textbooks, mm -hmm. which are expensive enough. Right. Uh, yeah. But the the, Boy, the, the machines that you need to bring in are, um, as you indicated, are expensive, mm -hmm. and so um, we've had. Uh, we got a grant uh, from um, the feds that comes through the state, the startup grant, okay. so that we were able to uh, use some of that money. Uh, we've had some of our uh, business partners step up with uh, machine uh, machines, uh, and that's been a real help. Uh, we've we've searched uh, the internet to to find deals on mm -hmm. uh, used equipment. Okay. And so uh, we're able to do that. So we have lathes and CNC machines and woodworking and uh, a variety of woodworking machines and, and um, uh, weld, welders. Welders. So, yeah. So yeah. We, we, have, um, we have a lot of different uh, things that are coming in. And mm -hmm. our, our shops are really uh, right now pretty full. We have... Um, most of the big stuff <laughs> that we need at this point, uh, we hope within in about uh, a year and a half or two years, we'll be able to build out some advanced shops. 
And what's, and so, a, what's an advanced uh, shop, Jonathan, in, in well, the terms we, here? Well, we have certain things. We're 6 through 12, so uh, 6, 7 are, um, are basically industrial arts. Okay. And then as, as you uh, get into 8th uh, grade, you start to see uh, uh, more more than just the getting to know the tools and, and so on. So you're you're building out um, a whole different set of of um, of, 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 of skills, expertise right. that right. they're going to need. And so uh, they will they will be doing uh, more CNC. We have we we actually have a very good. Um, uh, CAD program right now. We have an excellent teacher there, and he's been doing a tremendous job in three mm-hmm. D printing. So they're they're learning that. It's very popular. Oh, I'll bet so, the I'll uh, bet the kids are all over the three D printing. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll have basic machining, and then we'll have advanced machining and mm-hmm. uh, CNC machining. And so there's a lot of different things that we're going to. Uh, work on, but we'll need an, another set of labs because you you can have you need fewer people just for safety and supervision. Sure. You need fewer people in the shops than you would have in a classroom, and and the shops uh, those shop periods are ninety minutes each. Mm-hmm. So there are two two periods in the day. So so what does the um, Rob had shared a little bit about the curriculum, which I I found interesting, um, which is you know very different from you know traditional uh, public school as as I know it. Uh, anyways, you know for for grades six through twelve, it's you know the core core curriculum, you know the STEM and. Um, uh, but you know, wood shop and and auto shop and all those things that I grew up with, that they, they they no longer really exist in in our school system today. Whereas with with P Tech, you're doing traditional curriculum, but you're doing it in a different way, as I understood it. It's much more applied. Is that am I correct? That is true. Okay. That is true. We're we're trying to uh, link. Uh, what they're doing in the classroom with what they'll be doing in the shops. Gotcha. So you're uh, really getting them ready for a career, a specific yeah. skill, a, a, a trade right. skill. And, and that's particularly true in math mm-hmm. or in reading. So there's more technical reading. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and in math, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, students stumble over um, – decimals and mm. fractions. Mm-hmm. Well, in machining, you better know your decimals and fractions. <laughs> uh, and, yes, you better. Uh, and so all of a sudden that becomes very important because you work on that and then you're going to go out in the shop and they're gonna, and you're going to need to know that. Mm-hmm. So you're linking a, an interest and the, the math that you're doing so they, they come together. And so we're... Tr- you know, we still have a ways to go in, in, in working that out so it's more seamless. Uh-huh. But uh, that's the goal, and, and uh, Rob is doing a, a very good job of bringing that together. So so what we'll be doing, like, we don't do auto shop. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is there are schools that do have auto shop here. Okay. So, uh, well, we're looking more uh, for the the skilled building and manufacturing trades. So industrial arts is really in sixth and seventh grade. And then eighth grade is wood shop and construction. Mm-hmm. Ninth grade is middle shop and manufacturing. Uh, and then 10th uh, grade uh, is going to be mechanical systems. And then they'll have an option of advanced wood shop or metal shop. And then they'll go, they'll start uh, in, in 11th grade specializing more. So do they want to do machining? Well, they're, they're going to start moving in that direction. Okay. And most of their stuff is going to be working on that. So what we're trying to do is uh, uh, we're working, we're, we're trying to help them get NIM certification 
for the different skill sets that you and, need and MIM, in, and MIM in the for, manufacturing world. Yeah, and MIM for our audience is stands for uh, metal. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an it's a industry certification. Me, me, uh, metal and metal working skills. Okay, all right, thank you. Yes, uh, so I, I so you mentioned that at about eleventh grade they start specializing. I, at the very beginning, what what does it take to get into this charter school in sixth grade? Right. That's I, what, what kind of skills do they do they come in with nothing or have you what 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 kind of students do you accept in sixth grade? I guess I should ask because I'm, I'm still stuck in that mindset of college. You have to have a little bit of skill set right to get into these classes, and in sixth grade. I had these students ever seen these machines before? No, no, no. And that's part of what what happens the first two years is they're they're becoming familiarized with different tools, hand tools, small power tools. Uh, sixth graders don't they use a scroll saw, but you know uh, they don't, they're not going to use big power tools because uh, we we want them to kind of go in gradually and really realize that the stuff they're working with. Is um, can hurt you. Yeah, I'd <laughs> so, imagine you want them all to keep their keep all their fingers. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> that that is that is a a, a real goal. And <laughs> so we we <laughs> but but the the first thing we work on is safety, mm, and that is reviewed number every one. year. Okay. Yes. So you you have to be aware because if you uh, lose sight of that, you tried to do things too quickly and, um, mm -hmm. you know, you get familiar and you, you forget that with familiar, well, familiarity comes contempt. Uh, oh, and so you want to really help them understand, you know, all the time you have to be aware of what you're doing. Right. Gotcha. And so, and, and, and we have a standing rule. You horse play in the shops and you're out. Uh, you're, you're done with the shops. Okay. And, uh, and, and we've had, you know, a student do that, and he doesn't go into the shop. He's out of the shops for the semester. For oh, for the semester. So there, there are some oh, yeah. uh, steep consequences. It's not like getting a detention. No, gotcha. no. It's this. This is serious stuff. We mm -hmm. there's got to be teeth in in mm -hmm. something like this because of uh, it, it's dangerous. Safety. It can but be if, very if, dangerous. If, you, if you're aware and you've taken the safety training and you follow it. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. Gotcha. It's just that you know they're they're young and and they forget. So there's just a lot of reminders. Absolutely, and I'd imagine that you keep up with those reminders. Like you said, you do a safety every year. It's refreshed. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. I would imagine that's very important. No matter what age you are, you know, we everyone gets complacent in their jobs a little bit. And so Absolutely, that, yeah. safety is paramount in any good uh, manufacturing or construction oper operation. Right, mm -hmm. it, the safety is discussed every single day. Um, so, yeah, the, great, great that you're starting and focusing in on on safety because that is absolutely critical. Yes. And we are going to talk more about that after we come back. We're going to have about a five-minute commercial break here. Jonathan will stay on the line with us. And if you are curious about the school that we're talking about, check out jamesirwin.org. That's James I R W I N dot org. And also, in the meantime, go ahead and check out cobrt.com. Sign up for our newsletter and uh, check out our events. And be sure to like. And subscribe to our YouTube page. Thank you so much. We'll be right back here on Connect and Collaborate. Stay with us. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome back to Connect and Collaborate. I am Alex Hopkins, taking over for Tammy Schaefer, your regular on-air producer. And all this week, we have been focusing on secondary education. And this week, I do have to tell everyone, is brought to you by Talent Found. Talent Found connects students, job seekers, workers, and businesses with the programs, tools, and resources to design their own unique paths, to career and business success. Talent Found is championed by the Colorado Workforce Development Council and powered by Talent Found Charter Affiliates. Talent Found, discover ability, develop talent, and find success. Learn more at talentfound.org. We also have Kristen Muzzy with us. She is leading the manufacturing vertical for Colorado Business Roundtable. She's a champion and advocate for manufacturing in Colorado, in Colorado and nationwide. And we also have with us 
um, Jonathan Jim. Berg. Yes. yes. Thank the, you. The CEO of, of James Irwin Charter Schools. Uh, welcome back, Jonathan. Well, thank you. We're, I am, I'm super elated to, again, to have met um, yourself and a couple of your, your key people, Rob Doherty, um, the principal of one of your charter schools, which is p and which is really the, the focus of our conversation yeah. today. And then Linda Carroll, um, just you have, if they're representative of all of your staff at James Irwin, wow. Uh, yes. Kudos uh, to you and everyone there for recruiting such phenomenal, dedicated people. I just, I mean, instantly, in less than a minute on the phone with when I first met Linda, it was, it was just instant, like I'd known her forever, <laughs> and she's so passionate about what James Irwin is doing. So, well done, sir. Well, thank you, and uh, I'm happy to report that they are typical of our of our staff. <laughs> Somehow, I, yeah, I had really a are. feeling. I mean, we have a remarkable staff. That's that's amazing, and so we're we're talking about the the P Tech Trade School, which is a um, is <clears throat> grades six through twelve, but also two years after. Um, and it is focused. Uh, uh, it's it's a trade school, but it's it's a charter slash trade school. Very innovative um, here in Colorado. And as I understand it, there are two pathways. Um, there's a, a manufacturing pathway and a construction pathway. Um, what does that mean for you know our audience? That I mean, this is all a very new concept here in Colorado, let alone you know nationwide. So. What is, what is that? <laughs> yes. They, uh, well, when, when uh, our students move into their junior year, uh, they start to specialize based on, we, we've tried to give them, up until this point, we try to give them different experiences uh, so they, they get a little taste of uh, different, uh, different skilled trades. Okay. And then at that point, uh, when they become juniors, they start to specialize. And so our goal for them is to start, uh, well, they have been working on it already, but to really focus on earning stackable certifications, either through NIMS or uh, HBI, um, in in the field that that they would like to go into, in the career field that they want to go into. Uh-huh. So uh, the construction pathways, uh, you know, deal with... Uh, Carpentry and masonry uh, and heavy equipment, mm. uh, plumbing, electrical. Oh wow! Um, wow! And so we're yeah. we're trying to move them into into the in those directions. Now, you know, both electrical and electrical and plumbing are also can also be used in uh, the manufacturing. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Realm also. So uh, those are kind of uh, cross cultural, if you will. Yes. Uh, and so um, we do that, and then uh, and then they move into the uh, uh, the manufacturing pathways, and so they have computer aided design and three D printing, mm-hmm. uh, and they uh, work on and machining, of course, mm-hmm. and welding. Okay. Uh, and so they they've already started. Uh, by the time they reach your junior year, to have uh, at least one certification in each of these. Wow! And in, so, in in high school, yeah, right. That's that's right. fantastic. And so, what you know, we're really trying to what we're trying to work out. In addition, is is outside of school, is there some way we can make a, make summer uh, do summer school, if you would if you will, so that they can continue to work on some of these certifications. So we're trying to work out that framework uh, as we move ahead. So like, so like a, so like an internship or something with a, with a business out there. Yes. Okay. And, and we're also working on, on uh, that. We're actually, that is cooperative with uh, other districts and schools Mm -hmm. so that our, um, our businesses will have um, one point of contact where they can go, and we say we need interns. 
we'd like to have some interns to do X, you know, mm-hmm. uh, do machining or, uh, or you know, uh, in the electrical area. So we, we try to, we're going to try to uh, have one point of contact, and Rob has been working with that with the um, uh, with a, a group here in in town. Okay. To try to bring that together, and then uh, D49 has uh, an individual who has uh, really moved ahead on that and is trying to bring that all together. So th- there's a real cooperative spirit of uh, trying to find new ways to uh, scale up on this training for the skilled trades. That's great. Uh, in town. And so, you know, we're, we're talking to one another and trying to find ways to make that, to make that happen. Have, have you started to receive, let's say you started p in 2016. Now, yep. you know, we're, we're a full, over a year um, old now. Are you getting, are you getting promising or, you know, positive feedback from the business community? Are you beginning to see that? Yes, uh, I think I think they're very uh, they're very excited about it. Uh-huh. Uh, the the one thing that we started uh, six through ten. Okay. And so the in like internships, you know, start at seventeen <laughs> or eighteen. <laughs> right. Yeah. So they're not they're not taking I, the I mean, sixth it's graders. Just, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a insurance issue uh, sure. largely. Right, and so, um, so we're we're just getting to the point where where that uh, where that'll be taking off for us. Okay, excellent. Um, but uh, we we also just we also invite uh, different um, manufacturers in, mm-hmm. uh, different businesses to come in and talk to students about what they do. Uh-huh. And what the requirements are okay. uh, to give them kind of a uh, the students a, a, a real hands-on view of what opportunities might be out there and then uh, we're working to set up um, uh, tours of different manufacturing operations in town. Oh, that's a, that's fantastic. So, you know, so it, the kids can walk through and see what's going on, talk to mm-hmm. uh people on the floor yes see what's being built uh there, there's no, the, there's the nothing like yeah it. there's nothing yeah. like seeing it right i mean it, no. and 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 kids kids today you know the, the last what two three generations you know we've pushed our our children to you know go to you know go to college go to college go to college you don't want to go into manufacturing right Right. and manufacturing you know back in the day yeah you know it was a lot of the jobs back then and the work environment it was it was monotonous and and maybe it wasn't so nice but so much has evolved you know over over the years and manufacturing is absolutely uh rich with opportunity because you can start you know you could start in the in the shipping and receiving area of an entry level job in shipping and receiving or mm-hmm. or inventory or quality checks right and and work your way and you can s- work your way into just a multitude of different opportunities um, working on the line, doing maintenance and, and reliability, manufacturing, engineering, product innovation, quality, su- you know, supply chain, yeah. logistics, you know, purchasing, planning, et, et cetera, et cetera. It is, it is an ecosystem all in itself, more so than I think any other industry out there. Um, it, it you know, and obviously, I, I think I'm probably a little biased, but <laughs> but but it is it is truly rich with opportunities, and it's certainly been my experience and people that I talk to um, that have you know that are passionate about manufacturing. But but taking one of my, one of my mission, and I believe uh, is one of your shared missions as well, is dispelling the paradigm that that manufacturing and skilled trades are lesser than. 
um, that they're less desirable, that they're not as as lucrative, um, and it, it you know again just lesser than um, having a career with a four year degree, and that is just not the case. Not true um, at the all. you know the average average wage in manufacturing <laughs> and skilled trades is higher than the national average uh, salary. And, you know, gosh, some of the welders, like right here in Colorado, they're over six figures, you know. I got to change careers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, great. <laughs> but, but it also leads to the opportunity to become an inventor mm -hmm. and a potential entrepreneur as well. So the opportunities are, are rich, and it's great that you're bringing businesses in to to share their stories, their real life experience, and their the opportunities available to the kids, and also to take the kids out to see the manufacturing and the construction sites today, because it is a different world. It is definitely that's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Absolutely true. What what's uh, the response you get from the kids? I I love hearing yeah. about you know what are what are they saying? Uh they love it. They go. They go visit. They come back. They they'll talk about that for days. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it, it's there's. I mean, they're at that age where they're they're moving toward adulthood, mm -hmm. and they don't know really what it looks like. Right. And you get them out there. You get them the floor. You you they they talk to. Uh, some of the people out there, they see what they're doing, yeah. and they say, I can do this. Right. You know, th this is interesting to me. Uh, yeah. And, so, and that's what we're trying to do. You pique their interest. Um, they already know that they're more interested in working with their hands, working on concrete things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, you, you, give, you give them opportunities to look at these things, and they get excited about that. Oh my gosh! I get excited. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it, it's good, and and so you know, and, and 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 like you're saying, there's so many opportunities out there. Uh, you know, part of what we'll be teaching is entrepreneurialism. I love I mean, it. At some point, would you like to have your own business? Well, what is it going to take to do that? What exactly. does that look like? Exactly. And um, you know, and we'll have we'll have courses on business management. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that uh, we'll be instituting is is we're going to get they're going to bid a project. Oh, wow, that's awesome! So that's amazing. What does that look like? Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things is it's it's you know you got your materials and you got your wages and you got your uh, you your business over your other business overhead plus your. Um, you know, taxes on your wages and all that yeah. and transportation and specialty materials and right. timelines. And you start bringing all that together and they start seeing a more complete picture of what, what goes on. Something that's really applicable. It's not theoretical. It's, this is applicable that they can take yeah. and actually create their own. Yeah. Oh, that's that's that that touches my my heart. That is that's awesome. How many um, do you have it? So you, again, you just started in two thousand sixteen. You started with six through ten. So you don't have a you don't have graduates yet. No, we don't. Okay. When when do you expect your first graduate? Well, uh, theoretically, uh, next year. Okay. Uh, but they they can uh, we're working uh, so that they could go on into uh, uh, community college and start working on an AA degree. Is that in conjunction in with Pi is that in conjunction with Pikes Peak? Yes. Okay, I thought so. Yes, that's great. That's so. I I just from a different perspective, cost wise. Is that going to be tied into a tuition already, or is that separated out? I know, I know that's an awkward question. <laughs> I don't know that I got that out the way I wanted it to. Okay. Well, um, 
tuition, yeah, we would cover the tuition because the state oh, wow. uh, had recently had uh, passed a law uh, that would uh, allow us to do that as long as they are uh, engaged uh, in the community college and so that we would uh, pay for uh, for their training. Oh my god. That is amazing. So, so it flowed from the state through us. Cause, because charter schools are public schools. Right. Yeah, so uh, that will uh, that would go through and that's why our, our name is Power Technical Early College that they can move ahead and go into college well, uh, and we're uh, developing the uh, uh, college classes that they can take at Pikes Peak or they can take at our facility uh, so they can uh, get a leg up on on that portion. Oh, wow. That is amazing. That's, I, I yeah, feel it's, like it's that's... A, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. That's phenomenal. That is fantastic. So, how did you? I mean, this is a this is a really new concept. Um, it's a fantastic concept. fills fills a huge yeah. need. Um, how did you recruit? You know, the first students yeah. because this is you know th that probably took some campaigning on your part. <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know the. In, in the charter world, we are, we are a choice school. So uh, if we want students, we have to advertise, let them know we're here, let them know what we do. Right. And so uh, we, we started off a couple years ago, or three, uh, four years ago, uh -huh. with a market survey uh, to try to figure out how many kids might be interested. Okay. And so um, that was helpful. And then uh, we just uh, try different venues. We do a lot of radio advertising. We uh -huh. do a lot of advertising uh, through Facebook. Okay. Uh, to let people know that uh, what the school is, um, where it's located, what we're trying to accomplish. And, uh, and then, you know, there are parents out there looking for different options because mm -hmm. they look at their, their children and they say, you know what? <laughs> I don't think they have the the kind of academic interest that would help them uh, that would allow them to really succeed in college. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then, what are we going to do? If, yeah. What are know, my in, What are in, my in, options? For past, yeah. For the yeah. past two decades or three decades, uh, we've dropped the skills training so they come out if they're not going to go to college they come out essentially with no no skill sets right and and they so, flounder and they flounder and they feel like they're a failure in society yes exactly mm -hmm. yeah. and so we're trying to get a a specific uh set of skills mm -hmm. so they have doors of opportunity open to them Great. And, you know, parents who are looking, you know, they, they know what their children's um, uh, abilities are and what their interests are. What their passions and are, so, yeah. And so, you know, if we line up, this is a good place for them to come. If, if those abilities and, and interests line up with what we're doing, mm -hmm. that, we're a great choice. Absolutely. So that's really what, kind of the way we, we sell it moving forward. Yeah. What, uh, so, what's... What's your capacity right now, um, student-wise, for PTAC? Uh, our capacity uh, in our present facility would be about 400 uh -huh. in the academic classrooms and about 320 in the uh, in the shops. In the shops. What do you have uh, enrolled today? Uh, 240. 240. And then uh, we're. Uh, and then we'll we'll probably be about three twenty next year. Excellent! Congratulations! It's huge. Yeah, so we're we're getting there, but now our problem is we're um, we're kind of topping out what we can do in our shops because they're going to be turning every period. <laughs> yeah, all the all four of them. So that's why we're 
trying to plan now is what we need, uh, what we're going to need in addition as we as we move ahead. And so, you know, for for our audience out there, because we have a lot of wonderful giving people out there, um, what do you guys need? What 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 are your needs to yeah. move this mission forward? Well, we're going to um, <clears throat> we're going to need uh, a, n a new building that'll have the uh, the advanced shops, mm -hmm. and of course, we'll need to fill those out with uh, the machines, the uh, and the tools, the hand tools, and the auxiliary tools. You know that they're going to need uh, in those shops. So. Uh, that's going to be a big need in the future. Okay. We have, um, Linda, Linda does um, Wishlist Wednesday on, I, I think it's on Facebook. Okay. Where she just kind of puts out things, and we have people from around the community that say, oh, welding gloves, I can do that. Oh, that's right, yeah. because you need a lot of, <laughs> you need a lot of consumables. And, and, you know, they'll, there's a, uh, a um, tab on that that they can click, and it will show them what we're looking for and they can order it right right online okay and it'll be delivered that is fascinating i love that oh it is yeah it is um I and do so uh, go, go ahead. ahead no no go ahead no I, and and what we found is is that uh there are just a lot of people uh in the trades people uh who don't have children that look this is a good idea and they'll step up and you know buy a, a set of wrenches or uh, safety glasses or, you know, what, whatever it happens to be on uh, that day. And, and so I think you can also get it uh, on our website. So it's, it's, um, it's a great thing. Uh, and, and people are, 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 you're right, they're very generous. And they, they very look much at that so. and say, I want to support something that's helping these kids move forward. Absolutely. I have uh, just one quick question here in the minute, 30 seconds we've got left. Um, wow. Do you? Yes, I, it goes quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, do you happen to have a number on your estimated graduates for 2019? I know that you said that's theoretical year that they'll graduate, but um, do, do you happen to have a number of students that... Well, I, think, I think we only we'll only have nine or ten that first year. That's great. It's still great. Yeah, absolutely. Now, see, we didn't in, we didn't intend to start in tenth grade, but we had some people that really wanted to come. So, oh, excellent. Uh, so yeah. we said okay, and uh, and and the reason I say it's theoretical, theoretical because if they decide to go on to uh, the community college, yeah, then uh, they don't get we. They walk, but they're, we hold their diploma until they finish. Okay. Oh, very cool. So okay. And so whenever they're done, either, you know, they might take three classes and decide I want to go to work. They're done. They get their diploma, and they're good. Or wow. they might do two years, yeah. and and they graduate with with both their AA and their and their high school diploma. Excellent. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Jonathan Berg, for Thank being you. with us. Thank you, Kristen. Yes. It's always a pleasure to have you. Learn more about James Irwin Charter Schools at James Irwin, I-R-W-I-N, dot, dot, org. dot org. Thank, Thank you. you.